Well, this is the Aeromax. Um, I think probably one of the most beautiful cars in the world. The Aeromax was a fantastic project for Morgan. Um, I think it was probably the first time the company got seriously involved with um, the modern world of um, car styling. Personally too, it was interesting because it took Morgan into a completely different price bracket. Is Morgan credible at over £100,000? I call it the workhorse of the specialist luxury sports car world, so you know, it's the one that gets you home, it's the, um, it's the Welsh pit pony, if you like, of the sports car world. So can we do a luxury version of it? Morgan only built 100 Aeromaxes. Um, now the reason for that was because we were charging perhaps double the price uh, that the nearest Morgan uh, was at that time. We wanted to make sure that those people who had actually invested in the company, you know, kept the value of their money. Um, of course, when all the deposits came in in more or less less than a month, we thought, why didn't we say 200? But of course, we'd said 100. As soon as you say you're going to do a limited edition, it's not really a limited edition. You lose a lot of credibility, I'm afraid, and a lot of goodwill. Why is it a great car? I think, um, I think because it, you know, it is quite practical. I mean, you can go to the supermarket and create um, you know, a big stir while you're doing it. So uh, you know, that's nice as well. I think the second thing, though, is that you know, whenever you stop, um, you just look back and you go, wow. Uh, and we call that automotive theatre. Uh, I mean, the perfect example of describing it probably is the petrol station on the motorway. And as soon as you're in a new car, everybody sort of stops and looks if it's a new car and they, uh, what, they ask you about it, what is it, you know, how fast does it go, how much does it cost. Um, automotive theatre isn't that. Automotive theatre is when you've gone in to pay for your petrol, You've come back, and they're still standing there. You say, why are you still standing here? And they say, I just want to see it move. Um, and that is automotive theatre, because that means you've got a car that is you know, a bit more than just new. It is a piece of kinetic art. How long has it been around? Five years, perhaps? Um, it is still stopping people in their tracks. How the Aeromax came about was because I had a customer who was absolutely, um, completely behind the technology that we put into the aero. He was a very, very well-respected um, car collector. He was a prince, actually a Romanian prince, but Prince Eric Stuartzer. And so he bought one of the first aeros, and then he bought another one. And then he said to me, he said, look, I want a special car, Charles. I want, you know, I want a one-off. And just at the same time, Matthew Humphreys from Coventry um, University sent me some sketches that he'd done. To be honest, Quite a lot of students send me sketches, you know, I mean, sort of, they know that it's pretty easy to put Mr. Morgan, Morgan cars, here are my sketches. But the fact is that Matthews really stood out, they really were amazing. So I called him down to the factory, I said, look, I've got this customer, he wants a special Morgan, it's got to be based on the panels we already make, so, you know, you can't change very much. So he sketched the first Aeromax, and to be honest, it was typical, it was completely impractical, the roof was too low, you couldn't get in it, all sorts of things that you would have, but it looked fabulous. And I showed them to Eric, and Eric said, yeah, build it. I'll, I'll, I'll finance the building of it. And then we showed the prototype at Geneva, I think in 2006, was it or seven. It, it was actually hidden away, you know, because we didn't want too many people to see it, because obviously it was a one-off, it was Eric's one-off car. Eric was absolutely delighted. Um, Matthew and I weren't so happy. It looked a bit like a banana, actually, um, a bit like the Mercedes, you know, it sort of slightly looked as if it was a bit weak in the middle. But, you know, as I say, the owner was absolutely delighted. After we built the prototype, the next stage, of course, is to go into production. What actually happened was that I must have had about 300 people who left their business cards at Geneva saying, if you ever go into production, I'm your man. Um, so what I then did was I did a sort of survey of, um, I think in the end, probably about 150 people. And I had some very amusing people, you know. One of the questions was, what, what cars do you own currently? And after about the sort of 10th car, occasionally somebody would go, I've got a BMW 3 Series, I think. But I, I'm not sure where it is. Good Lord, I haven't seen it for years. <laughs> The Aeromax was called the Aeromax because whilst it was in development, Kira and I had a son, Maximus, and Eric actually became very close to us. We both sort of more or less said, you know, Aeromax sounds really good, you know, because it's a, the, the best aero you've done so far, so it's the Aeromax. 
And I said, and he said, yeah, but your son's Maximus. He said, it's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. And I thought, you know, so it just came like that, really. Actually, M Maximus, quite funnily, because obviously then he grew up and he saw an Aeromax. Uh, I said, do you like that? That car's sort of named after you, you know? And um, at about three and a half, he said, no, no, I much prefer diggers over there, Dad. I, 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 I'd rather have a digger, which was typical, wasn't it? I use my Aeromax every day. Now, I know that's a great privilege. It's a little bit of an indulgence, but having said that, um, you know, I find it completely practical, you know, whether it's sort of whizzing around Morven or whether it's going to London or whether it's perhaps going further afield. The classic Morgan is a shape a bit like the Coke bottle and it's loved like the Coke bottle for what it is as a sort of um, icon. And um, you tinker with it at your peril. The aero range is a different thing. It's a car for all seasons. It's a car for every day. But the edge of that, of course, and the niche for that is that um, it is even more extreme than a Porsche 911. So, you know, the, the thrills are greater. Uh, it's a bit lighter. Um, it's a lot more individual. And, um, you know, it's more exciting to drive. So the, the actual style of that has to be more aerodynamic, it, 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 by definition, because it's an everyday car. But I think it can still push the boundaries uh, in terms of style, because essentially um, people still buy cars because of what they look like. You know, they don't really buy them because of the functionality, they buy them because they like the look of it. So it gives the artist, if you like, a bit of a free reign. I love the quote I heard from the chairman of Cartier last year, actually, when he came to the factory. And uh, I mercilessly use it, um, much to his amusement. But he said, Charles, you've got to remember one thing. You can never repeat the past, but you can always be inspired by it. And to be honest, that's a very um, true um, idea behind every Morgan. The, the thing is that what's quite interesting is cars of this period in the 1930s and 1940s, when you see them uh, that have this style, are enormous. You know, the Delahays, the Mercedes, the Duesenbergs, they are vast. Uh, and this is a very small car. It, it, the footprint of this car is not a lot bigger than a Mini. Uh, and yet, of course, it looks like a completely elegant thing. And of course, it's, it's balanced because the engine's way back from the front axle line, so it's what they call a front mid-engine car. Uh, and yet, it, and you sit on the back wheels, so you feel you really can drive it by the seat of your pants. I mean, I've done 170 in it at Miramas, uh, not obviously on the road. Um, so it's pretty much quick enough. The aerodynamics could be better. And that's basically why we've gone from the Aero Max to the Aero Coupe. Uh, and we found, in fact, when we were motor racing in GT3, that the Aero Coupe was a hell of a lot more aerodynamic. So we were getting uh, about 30, 40 kph more uh, on the long straights than we were with the old Aero-style car. So we've gone to the Aero Coupe primarily to get more maximum speed. On a country road, if you're in a supercar, it's absolutely impossible to do anything. Whereas this car, you can. People like this car. You know, it, it doesn't create envy. Um, it's funny, because actually a lot of expensive cars, you know, a lot of people don't really like people driving them. But I had a bloke um, on a scooter um, whiz up beside me, you know, I go like this on the windscreen. And it was one of those things where you go, no, 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 no. Um, anyway, eventually I wound the window down. He said, I just got to tell you, I just got to tell you, I've seen this car in pictures, but now I've seen it in the flesh. I can't tell you how, how happy I am now. I've seen it, you know, and I thought that was so sweet, actually. You know? <laughs> I, think, I think the important thing about a Morgan is that you sort of feel a sense of um, fun when you get in and drive. So uh, essentially that comes from the fact that um, they're very light and quite precise and you know, you're sitting very low and you, you feel balanced. So to an extent, every Morgan actually, uh, and especially the three-wheeler, just makes you feel you're in a real driving machine. I suppose it just encourages you to be a bit light-hearted really. You've got to have a light car. 
Um, actually, it's funny because these days, you know, some of the luxury cars aren't nearly as much fun to drive as, for example, a Citroen Saxo or a Ford car. And that's purely a f the fact that the Ford car and the Citroen Saxo don't weigh anything. So, of course, they're fun, you know. Whereas the big Audi is three tons. So, you know, to be honest, where's the fun there? It's like driving a lorry. Of course, there's still a big thrill in a V8 engine, but um, that's not really what it's about. What it's about is a, is, is a car that you can use that power. Most cars, actually, see the engines bang over the front wheels, which is completely the wrong place, because, you know, all the time, you're trying to move those front wheels, and they've got that bloody great weight on it. No, I think cars have lost, um, to a certain extent, some of their um, finesse, um, because, you know, all the safety features and all the... Uh, electronic controls have taken the fun out of driving, you know, um, although the cars have got safer, they haven't really um, kept the uh, mechanical properties of the original cars. They haven't kept the engineering excellence of the original cars. I would say my favourite Morgan is the one that we haven't built yet, um, and we're always improving them, and actually the Aero Coupe is a better car than this. You know, you, you do have s sort of lots of um, nostalgia for, you know, the, the other cars. I mean, I, you know, I'm so old, I won a sports car championship in the Morgan Plus 8, the original Morgan Plus 8 with the Rover engine, and uh, so, you know, that's quite a, close to my heart. What I want to do is improve cars all the time, so, um, you know, cars aren't, aren't perfect yet.